Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is part two in our video series of analyzing the poem A Hard Thrust by Cecil Day Lewis. So welcome to all the grade 12 learners out there who are watching or teachers out there who are also watching. In this video we will look at past exam questions. Excuse me. And I always tell my learners that it's not that you don't understand the poem, it's not that you don't understand the content of the poem, it's that oftentimes you struggle with how to answer the questions in the exam. So we're going to look at some tips and tricks and things that we need to know when we write down our answers. Right? So I hope that you're going to learn a lot in this um, video. Okay, let's just look at our summary of the poem just to refresh our memories. For those who watched video one already. Okay, so in this poem, A Hard Frost, the speaker describes how a freezing winter night has left icy frost crystals all over the window glass, the grass, the trees, and the hedge in the garden. So remember, he was looking out of the window, and these were all the things that he saw that were covered in icy frost crystals and snow and all of that. Okay. It looks very beautiful, almost like white flowers, showing that spring is soon to arrive. But the frost will soon melt and leave the landscape dreary and grey again. The speaker states that this overnight transformation is actually just an illusion, and the real change is happening underground, where the hard lumps of the earth are being cracked and broken by the sudden frost. This will eventually allow the seeds that are presently frozen and dormant by winter to reach the air and moisture that they need to start growing when the weather warms up. Okay, I just want to check if my questions and answers are together. Okay, yes they are. So, uh, question number one. What does the word hard in the title suggest about the frost? Now, learners, before we go through the answer, check it out there, right? It's two marks, right? So two marks refers to two points. So you're not going to just write one word that hard in the title means this or whatever. Two marks refers to two points, two sentences, maybe two clauses that you can include right, within your answer. Don't just write one thing or one sentence or one part. Right, to your answer or one idea okay you need to include two different facts in your answer if you have a two mark question right so that you can get both ticks okay and we look at the same when we go to those difficult three mark questions as well okay so what is the word hard suggest about the title sorry what is the word hard in the title suggest about the frost so the term hard in the title implies that a very harsh and harmful set of weather conditions will occur within the frost. Okay. Refer to line one. A frost came in the night and stole my world. What impression? What idea? If you get that question in your exam, what impression? It means what idea of the frost is created in this line. So two marks. Okay. The frost is personified and compared. To a thief which creates a disturbing okay to a thief yeah, I'm skipping here. which creates a disturbing impression so one mark for the frost is compared to a thief and one mark for a disturbing impression yeah. so you need to give your two points there okay it suggests that the frost works silently and stealthily taking that which does not belong to it that's just a different answer that you could also use okay Explain what the first line conveys about the speaker's state of mind. Okay, how is the speaker feeling? The speaker is shocked and surprised. Why? Because the scenery that winter presented. Right? So that's your two points there. Shocked and by the scenery presented by winter. Okay, let me just move this down. What does the term still reveal about the speaker? Again, the word still reveals that the speaker is surprised when he views the unexpected transformation of the landscape. Okay. Changeling. Account for. Account for grade twelves refers to explain. So you need to explain the poet's use of the term changeling. The word changeling suggests that a secret 
or a magical exchange has apparently occurred overnight. Okay, number four. Um, why does the speaker refer to the frost as precocious in line two? Okay. Precocious refers to something that is developed at an early age that is, I think it's supposed to be unusual or, un or sorry, um, that is usual or expected. So, precocious refers to something developed at an early age, right? like a child who behaves in a way too mature for their age, let me just say their age, let's not say her, okay, let's keep it gender neutral. Like a child who behaves in a way too mature for their age, the frost has appeared too early um, and is presenting unusual images of spring. simple with our two points. Okay, number five. Refer to line three. Image of spring too brilliant to be true. How do the words contribute to your understanding of the speaker's feelings? Okay. While the speaker is delighted at the transformation of his world from the bleak, harsh landscape of winter, he is equally pensive in that he knows that the transformation is temporary. There are two points there. Number six. White lilac dot 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 loading on the edge. Loading the edge, sorry. So grade twelves, if you have a question like this and there are any phrases or words missing from the question, I encourage you, what do you do there? Go up, go back in your exam question. What did it say? Line four to five. Am I correct? No, line. Let me just sorry, let me just double check again. What question are we busy with? See, even I'm forgetting. Right. Um, question, that, yeah, line four to five. Okay. Yeah. Take a highlighter or take a pen or a pencil, whatever you have there in your exam, and highlight that section. Okay. Because in the exam, they're not going to give you the whole part um, retyped in your question. So go back, see what words are left out so that you understand the whole image or the whole idea, whatever's being asked there. Go back, it's not going to hurt you to take a page back or to look back at your question paper, underline, highlight, make up, um, what do you call it, a flower, not a flower, a cloud or a circle, or whatever. Right? Just so that you know what the whole line is referring to. Okay, back to four to five. Explain the reference to flowers in the context of the poem. Right, so remember guys, I was quite vehement when I explained this in the video number one in this video series of A Hard Frost. The reference to flowers, it's not real flowers. Just remember that, okay? Because many learners make that mistake. The speaker makes reference to different types of flowers in line four to five that typically bloom in early spring. However, right, that's a nice indicator there. Because it is winter time, the frost creates an illusionary image of flowers, making the speaker misconceive, right? Or misinterpret that spring has arrived. So the flowers are not real. Excuse me. Describe how the unusual word blossomers, line seven, helps create the unusual image in the same line. The unusual word blossomers supports the idea that the arm dreams bore crystal flowers, which is hardly possible. So again, how does a tree make crystal icy flowers? Surely it's not true. Okay, next one. Discuss the image of the speaker describing the mist in line 7 as amorphous as the blind tissue in line 8. What is going on here? So, the image is disturbing and ominous as the reader is under... Supposed to be unaware. Okay. Unaware of what will emerge of the mass of the blind tissue. Alright. Okay, next one. How is the brilliance of what of sorry, how is the brilliance 
of that winter moon captured in line 7 to 10. Three marks. Three points. The brilliance on and beauty of the atmosphere is inviting, alluring, and almost mystical, and this is evident by the term amorphous. On this winter morning, the rare winter sun makes everything sparkle and dazzle, and that refers to the field blaze with diamonds. Okay. Refer to line 10. The sun looks out and the field blaze with diamonds. Three marks. Comment on the effectiveness of the image in the context of the poem. Okay. You remember? Effective. What does that mean? Effective means, does it fit together? Right? So, what is being said in the image, does it fit in with the idea there? Right? So, if you say, if you say, sorry, the sun looks out and the field blaze with diamonds. Field blaze, fields blaze with diamonds. That is a deeper meaning. That is a, a figurative meaning. So, does the literal, in other words, fit in with the figurative? Is it effective? Does it go together? Can the light that is shining on the field look like sparkly diamonds? Do those two ideas, images, fit together? You need to explain. But now, it's three marks. So, in English, you always um, state the obvious point. Stop. State the obvious point. Now, what is the obvious point if you look at the line looks out and the fields blaze with diamonds? What do you, how do you get that first mark? You say, in this line, the sun is shining on the fields and the light that the fields reflect are so intense that it appears to be on fire. The sun looks out and the fields blaze with diamonds. Okay, that's your first idea, your first mark. Explain that. Okay, next one. You need to comment on the effectiveness of the image in the context of the poem. The frost, now give a little bit of a deeper meaning. The frost is compared to diamonds. Explain the imagery there. Because the frost is hard and sparkly like diamonds when the light strikes it. But now for the third mark, you need to say, okay, is it effective? So, the image is therefore effective because it conveys the transformation of that of a dreary of the dreary winter landscape into a beautiful magical wonderland. No? Sorry, the speaker. Sorry, the image is therefore effective because it conveys the transformation of a dreary winter landscape into a beautiful magical wonderland. Yeah, so it is supposed to be that the. is just an illusion as the real transformation is happening deep inside so it's effective because this blaze fire that that is um, um, apparent on, on the field is an illusion it's not real and that is why it's effective right so it does fit together the image um, the letter and the figurative, figurative does fit together okay 11. how is the brilliance of winter didn't we do that already this is here to us. Okay, let's take a look. Here we go, number 11. Refer to lines 11 and 14. Mockery spring. Now again, go all the way up, 11 to 14. I'm going to highlight so that I know what is going on here. Highlight. Okay, mockery spring to lend this bridal gear for a few hours to a raw country maid, then leave her all disconsolate with old feelings of aconite and snowdrop. Now we know what's going on. Now we go back to our exam. Question. And now number 11. Okay. What is meant by mockery spring line 13? The frost glistens like diamonds and the crystal in the sun. Excuse me. But. The frost glistens like diamonds and crystals in the sun. But this brilliance will not last as the dearness of the winter will soon return. This is simply a temporary transformation of the landscape, and the reference to Mockery Spring reinforces the superficiality of the scene by suggesting the deceptiveness of the frost. B, or 11.2, discuss how the imagery in this line convey 
this week is stone with three marks okay let me just move this up so that it's not so it's nicer to read okay the speaker uses a disappointed tone to depict that the beauty of winter is short-lived yeah? and i need to discuss the imagery right? you can't just say the tone and get one mark if you say there's a disappointed tone you're only going to get one mark out of the three marks okay so explain that is discuss the imagery the winter landscape is metaphorically compared to a plain and unattractive country maid who is transformed on a wedding day by her bright and beautiful bridal outfit and then one more point her beauty is short-lived after her wedding and she will return to her old self as will the landscape after the frost has melted so that's the comparison of the imagery and so see we're still looking at lines 11 to 14 discuss how the appearance of the frost is fleeting and misleading okay the speaker compares the frost to a young girl who only wears a beautiful wedding gown for a few hours instead of the full duration of a wedding celebration She is left with the reality of her raw country life when she no longer wears the lovely wedding dress. Okay, so in other words, the beautiful wedding was short lived and she faces her raw country life again. And this refers to the misleading part. Okay, let me put this one to over here. Okay, comment of the use of alliteration in line 15 now i can't remember the alliteration out of my head so i'm going to go back to line 15. okay it's the flounce and filigree of death okay so let me just change this okay there we go no it's this one comment on of the use of Alliteration line 15. The repetition of the soft F sound reveals and mirrors the idea of the, the landscape being overly ornamented, flounce and filigree. Often the frost melts and it will prove to be sorry to prove to have been unnatural and overdone excessively. Okay. Comment on the effectiveness of the image in line 15, flounce and filigree, the beauty of winter, the ice crystals are compared to a decorative ornament on the clothes on clothes or jewelry. However, this beauty is actually harmful to the plants, so is the reference to death. So the reference to death is effective. Real transformation. Okay. Critically comment on how this is shown in the poem. Okay. So real transformation is extraordinary. That is a statement. So you need to critically comment on how this is shown in the poem for three marks. So you need to discuss that. Okay. So in three points, you need to discuss your answer. Okay. Let me just do that and separate it. So any of these three points you need to give in your answer. So is the real transformation that's being referred to in line 16, is it extraordinary? So, transformation is often unseen and hidden below the surface. As opposed to the deceptive appearance of spring, the real spring is beginning to make itself felt unnoticeably underground. The frost is vital in bringing new life to earth, it loosens the thick clods of earth and it releases the seeds to breathe new life. And beneath the superficial harsh, harshness of a winter, there is hope of spring and promise of a new beginning. So these are various different points that you can mention for three marks in your answer. Guys, I don't know what's up with my Windows um, document. I know why it's doing this, but anyway, let me just fix it quickly. So you need to, with reference to diction, identify the tone in the last four lines of the poem. So how do you answer a diction question that also links in tone? Now diction, um, you should by now know, refers to words in the poem 
or phrases in the poem but now you need to look at the last four lines so you need to say the tone of the this poem is so and so and so but you can only look at the last four lines so you need to quote certain words if you're going to say the, the tone of this poem is excited then you need to say which words tell you that the poem or the tone of the poem is excited does unclenches tell you that it's excited does grip tell you that it's excited then you need to link it in but you can't just quote random words you need to explain why those words fit in with that particular tone okay so let's look at it words such as deep below stiff and grip suggest that the frost um, prevents the arrival of spring in the last two lines and clinches suggest otherwise okay um, let me take that the last phrase lets our future breathe brings relief with the use of the collective hour and the word breathe okay so the final um, the final tone is not positive you never write positive in your exam the final tone is affirmative or confident okay refer to line 17 to 19 by deep below dot 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 our future breathe critically discuss how the diction in this line conveys the speaker's message about the circle of life so again let's break it up you need to discuss the diction in line 17 to 19 so you go back you highlight 17 to 19 you choose certain words and then you refer to what is the message let me just see that it's a central message about the cycle of life okay the seeds represent fertility and are a reminder that quote something deep below the frosty earth there is potential for life okay let's give another diction the death of winter will be replaced by the vitality of spring when the dormant seeds germinate thus illustrating the interdependence of the seasons in perpetuating life and ensuring humanity's future lets our future breathe okay? that's another clue okay Therefore, with the use of the aforementioned diction, the speaker reveals the message that despite death occurring, winter, the natural cycle of life, it's supposed to be here, yeah. the winter, this death refers to winter in this context, the natural cycle of life will prevail. Line 17 to 20, comment on how these lines capture the centrality of the poem. The speaker looks forward to the new cycle of life as the frost nudges the earth to release the seeds that will sprout in spring. Just as spring signifies the end to the hardships of winter, in life one must look forward to a future that future take that as there is always potential for a better life despite short-lived adversity. The poet's central idea is that transformation in nature symbolizes the transformation in life of people who experience hardship. Okay, another tone of the poem. Initially, the speaker's tone is one of admiration and amazement because the scene he views is so surprising. However, the speaker tone changes to disappointed as he compares the beauty of winter to the temporary bridal gear and the, f and the frost as mocking people with the illusion of spring's arrival. He condescendingly refers to filigree and frowns of the scene and finally the speaker tone reveals his awe of and respect for the power of nature and the spring in the last three lines of the doubt you will get a question like that in your exam where you have to refer to different types of poem sorry different types of tone <laughs> throughout the poem and how it changes okay let me just check how long we got left okay good enough and let me just change this okay refer to the conclusion of the poem lines 19 to 20 grip on the seed and let's our future be do you agree that this metaphor can be applied to humans 
life can be described as difficult and humans go through many changes that can be icy as mentioned in the poem everyone has hidden potential and has the ability to go through a positive transformation and then we as humans grow through stages in our life where we are rebirth where we let the art where we rebirth grow Okay, the poem reveals to the reader that winter creates both beauty and deception. Do you agree with that? Substantiate by referring to diction. So, how do we know that there's beauty? You need to explain all of these, eh? White lilac, furred like a cat can make drift, loading the hedge, blossoms in crystal, blaze with diamonds, bridal gear. You guys can't just quote this, eh? You need to explain. White lilac refers to so and so and so. But like a cat can refer to so and so and so. However, despite the beauty, there's also deception as the diction stole my world refers to dot 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 and left this changing refers to dot dot dot. Okay, so you need to compare. And lastly, the beauty of the frost created by winter is meaningless. So, do you agree with that statement? Substantiate your response by referring to diction and imagery. A diction that you can refer to. Image of spring is too brilliant to be true. And imagery, frost is described as mockery that tricks the countryside with a false and temporary beauty that can cause death for plants. Real transformation is happening elsewhere. Okay, guys, so obviously you won't get those exact questions within your exam, but those are just a bit of a preview of past papers that we went through, how to answer it, and how to take the content knowledge and apply it and write it in on your answer book in the exam so best of luck if you are writing anytime soon i hope this video helped in your understanding a hard thrust if it um, if you're still a bit unsure go back to the video number one and as always like comment subscribe share this video around to anybody you you, uh, you might feel um, they struggling or in ha need help with their poetry and as always, I hope to see you or hope to see you soon on this channel. Okay, so have a beautiful day ahead, and best wishes for your exam.